Assalamu alaikum. Ahlan bikum. Welcome back to Qasid Online. This is Ayub Palmer, and I'm an Arabic instructor for Qasid Arabic Institute. This is the 15th video in our Arabic letters series, and we'll be learning about the ta and the ya diphthong. You can take out your writing worksheet and follow along with this video if you wish. For those who don't have the worksheets that accompany this video series, please fill out the form at the end of the video, and Qasid will have them sent to you. Let's get started. So we have four main objectives in this lesson. The first is to pronounce the ta and the ya diphthong correctly. The second is to recognize the ta and the ya diphthong when we see them in a word. The third is to write the ta and the ya diphthong correctly in their different positions. And remember, there are four positions for letters in the Arabic alphabet. We'll be looking at all four of those positions for both of these letters. And the fourth objective is to pronounce and write the ta and the ya diphthong in a word. And the word that we have for this lesson is ta'ir, ta'ir, which means bird. And we also have the plural tuyur, which means birds. So let's look at how we will pronounce these two different letters. So here we have the ta, and we don't actually have a letter that resembles the ta in English. So the closest that we have is a t, but the t doesn't really give justice to the ta. Now the ta is formed by taking the 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 middle of the of the front part of the tongue and touching the so we take the the middle of the front part of the tongue and place it in the place it at the roof of the mouth at the roof of the mouth. Then push away. Ta. And you should and then you should have a sound that is is not a t sound but it's a but it's a a ta sound. So it's not closer to the teeth, it's closer to the to the roof of the mouth. This is the type of sound that we're trying to, to produce. So the ta is, is a sound that we don't really have in English, but we can kind of approximate it by thinking about it as a T that's pronounced closer to the roof of the mouth as opposed to the T which is pronounced near the teeth. Okay, so... I th the, the ta is something that will take time and will become clearer as we as as you practice it some more. Now let's look at the ya diphthong. This is a bit easier. So the ya diphthong is like the y in English, as in the word yellow. So in other words, it's in other words, it's the Y that is a consonant and not a vowel. So that shouldn't be too difficult. But we've seen that the Ya can also be can also be a the Ya can also be a long vowel. And this is not a long vowel. The Ya diphthong is not a long vowel. The Ya diphthong is a consonant. And so we have to remember the distinction between the long vowel ya, which is an e sound, and the diphthong ya, which is a ya sound. And this will become clear as we proceed. Okay, let's look at where we're at in the grand scheme of things. So far we're at the ta, right here. 
and the ya diphthong. Okay, right there. So that's what we've got. Let's look at these letters in all of their different positions. So again, we have four positions for the Arabic letters. So the first one is the independent position. And the ta looks like a sod without the notch, but with a line coming down onto that teardrop. In the, in the initial position, Again, the ta looks very similar, but connects. In the third position, the ta looks like this. And in the fourth position, the ta looks like this. Again, it's a teardrop shape with a line coming down. Now the ya diphthong again is a is a is just like the ya yeah that we learned as a long vowel so it looks like just the same but there are going to be some differences which we'll, we will point out later so the ya yeah, again the ya yeah looks like this and in the medial position it looks like this and in the final position it looks like this Okay, so let's write these. Okay, I'm going to change my color. So let's look at the, let's do the ta. Okay, so in the independent position, the ta looks like this. I made one bigger than the other, but that's okay. Okay, looks like that. The first one was a bit small, but that's okay. So the now in the in the initial position, again it looks similar, but we're going to kind of make it a little bit longer to show that we're connecting. That. like that. Okay. Now in the medial position, again, we connect, teardrop, and connect again with the line. Let's do it again. Connect, teardrop, connect. Okay. So you, you're going to have to go a little bit farther to connect like that. Okay. That's the medial position. And the final position we connect and then finish like that. Connect and then finish like that. So that's our thought. Now let's look at the the ya, yeah, the ya yeah diphthong. Okay, so in the independent position again the ya yeah looks like this again let's do it again okay yeah it looks like that like that now in the Initial position, it looks like this. Like this. Like this. Now you may be wondering, how, well, how is this different than the ya yeah that we've already learned? Okay, and this is the medial position. And this is where we're going to explain how it's different. So the ya yeah diphthong will either have a vowel, in other words, we know the fatha here, or the dhamma, or the kasra. 
if it has any one of these three vowels, short vowels, one, two, three, then it's automatically a diphthong. Okay? Let's write this one more time here. Yeah. Now, if it has a sukun, if the ya has a sukun on it, then we look at the previous letter. And if the previous letter has a kasra, has a kasra, then it is a long vowel. E. But if it has a dhamma or a fatha, then it is a diphthong. So, this will become clearer later. So we have ya in the middle position again. Okay? And finally we have the ya in the final position. Again, there are two rules for whether the ya is a diphthong or not. It's a diphthong if it has if it has a fatha, wow, or ya on the ya itself, or if the previous letter has a fatha or a dhamma and the ya has a sukun. Those are the two conditions for the ya to be a diphthong. I know it sounds a bit confusing, but it'll become clearer. Change my color here. Okay, it'll become clearer now. Let's first just review a little bit. The thaw in the independent position looks like this. Two, it looks like this. Three, it looks like this. And four, it looks like this. Okay? And the ya. Yeah, Diphthong, okay, is again like this, like this, like this, like this. Okay, now we want to write the two words bird and birds. Okay, so we want to write bird and birds. So, let's do bird first. Okay. So, bird is tayr. Tayr. Okay? So, we hear the ta, ta, tayr. So, we're going to write the ta. And then we hear fatha, a, tay, tay. So, it's a fatha. And then we have a ya, tay, y, tayr. So we're going to put the ya, and then we have a ra, tayr, and add the ra. So this is going to, uh, actually we forgot our sukun, so let me just erase that ra there quickly, and let's go back here to our pen, and because we did hold that ya tayr so now let's write it out so we have let's let's combine these so the ta the ta is going to connect to the ya because both the ya will connect to both sides and the ya will connect to the ra so let's write them together so we have we have tayr Here again, the the uh, fatha here will be written on top here, and the sukun will be written on here. So we have here tayr, tayr. Now let's let's look at this from the perspective of trying to understand how this is different from the ya 
as a long vowel. So, first of all, we look at the ya. Look at the ya here. Now, the ya here has a sukun. And remember, there are two conditions. We have the first one is that, so this is for a diphthong. Ya diphthong. The ya has fatha, lamma, or kasra. Second is that ya has sukun and previous letter. or fatha. So you see here the ya here, it has a sukun. You see the ya has a sukun here. So that means so we so that means we look at the second the second condition, which is that the ya has a previous letter wow and fatha. And lo and behold the ta has a fatha. So the ta is the previous letter to the ya which has a fatha. So because it has a fatha we know that the ya has to be a y sound and not an e sound. Okay? This will become clearer, I think, in the second example. Let's change our color again to. Okay, so now the plural of bird is birds. Toyur. Toyur. So you hear that? Let's just draw a line here to separate these. So we have the ta in toyur. But you hear the u sound, tu, toyur. So that's a dhamma. And then we hear the ya sound, toyur. And that's our ya. And then we hear an u sound, toyur. That's a wow. And then we hear a ra sound. Tuyur. And then a ra. So. Actually, we forgot our, our bomma here. So let's erase these really quickly. And put our bomma. So here we said Tu yu yu. And so there's a there's a bamma here and then an u and then a ra. Okay. So now let's let's put these together. So these two again connect and these two will connect because the ya connects from both sides. So again the the bamma will go on top here and this bamma will go on top here. So we have the ta and then the ya, and then the wow. And don't forget our short vowels, tu yu, u, ra, tu yur. Now, if we look at the, the ya here, is it a ya long vowel or is it a ya diphthong? That's the question. So, it is a ya diphthong. How do we know? Well, we know because of our, let's go over here to our, our rule here. Number one, the ya has a fatha or a bamma or a kasra. And lo and behold, this ta, this ya has a bamma. So it's automatically a ya diphthong. So this is a ya diphthong. Okay? Just as this is a ya diphthong. Okay. Let's continue. Let's write those two words together. Change our color to a yellow here. Okay, so we have bird 
and birds. So we're going to write طير Again طير طير This means birds bird and then we have birds طيور 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 Great. Okay, let's summarize what we've done so far. So the letter ta in Arabic is pronounced by pushing the front, the front middle part of the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. Ta, ta, ta. It's, it's a ta sound that in which the tongue is actually not close to the teeth but moved back a little bit so that it is actually touching the roof of the tongue, the roof of the mouth, excuse me, and not the teeth. Now, the ya diphthong in Arabic is like the letter ya in English, as in the word yellow. So that's not too hard. And this is as opposed to the long vowel ya. So the ya has two types. It can be a long vowel ya, e, or it can be a diphthong y sound. The letter ta connects to letters both before it and after it. So in the third position, the ta looks like this. It connects from the front, from the right, and from the left. Now the ya diphthong also connects to letters both before it and after it. For example, in the third position, it looks like this, connecting from the right and from the left. Now, the ya is a diphthong if it has a short vowel on it. Right? And that short vowel is what? So, this is the first condition. We remember we have two conditions. One is the ya has a short vowel, that is a dhamma. Fatha or Kasra on it. And the second is that the the Ya has a Sukun and the previous letter has a Dhamma or a Fatha. This takes practice and it'll be it'll be quite easy and clear as we as we continue or as you practice this more. Okay. So, please download the worksheet uh the writing worksheet and practice writing these letters, the ta and the ya and the ya diphthong. And also, uh, please download your reading worksheet and practice that or practice it on the website and upload your audio file to the website when you complete that. So also, if you want to get a hold of our entire set of worksheets that go along with these video tutorials, Please see the instructions at the end of this video or in the text blur below. Thanks so much, and we hope to see you back here again at Qasr Online. Ma'asalamah.